this is going to be, I guess, not really a tutorial, more of just a uh, animation video. I guess I'm working on a scene here where this character is basically running with this uh, Vespa and then she's going to jump on it. And so far, it's just got a run cycle and it should turn off this. Yeah, sometimes the physics just makes things a little bit laggy. Um, so basically, she is going to jump on this bike. So this run animation was part of like a base pack of run animations that there were released a long time ago that you can't get anymore. I don't know what happened to them. Um, but they're not really, they're kind of good, but they're pretty robotic. So you do, if you want to use them, you do have to do a lot of tweaking. Um, so right now I'm just going to try and set up the scene. This scene was basically, it's kind of a copy of, um, if you've ever seen the girl who leapt through time, right in the beginning, she runs with her bicycle and then jumps on it before getting hit by a train. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, go see that anime. It came out a long time ago, I think in like 2005 or 2006 by, I think it was Studio Madhouse. The Madhouse was um, Satoshi Kon's old studio. So, now basically comes a lot of fine tuning. Probably have to move the bike and figure out how I'm going to do this. But this is just a random animation video. Fix this arm. And I also, I will continue with the other scene. But that's from, like I said, that's from episode 24. So I don't need to do that right now. Because I finally got the lines for this from the voice actor, Code Black, Hayate. She's voicing this character. So, a lot of little tweaks, and I do have to move this bicycle, well not bicycle, the um, Vespa into the right place, probably over and down a little bit. Tricky part will be lining this all up and trying to make it seamless. Now the good part with these, um, animations that are, I guess, um, like base animations, or even if you make your own animation, say like, when I get done with this, I want to move the whole thing. Let's register this. Um, under edit and apply center position bias, this is where you can move the whole animation around in X, Y, and Z. So let's see. If I decided I want to move her back to the edge of this, all you would have to do is what I think of Z and then type in whatever you want and it'll move that back. However, if you do that, you can't, if you hit like select all and reset or whatever, you can't really reset the whole animation. It kind of applies the center position bias, which means you can't change the center position without moving it up again you have to go back to it and then like say i hit 10 and it's too far back then i have to hit you know plus 10 or minus 10 to get it back to where it was and it can get kind of confusing there so let's see how far should she run like this about the 70 i guess so basically, where is it? Register. I'm gonna go to approximately 70. And 
select these bones, delete pretty much the motion data that's already in them so they stay where they are. And then it'll be easier for me to tweak it. So hopefully I'll manage to finish this episode, the first episode, by the end of the month. Oh, that's right, I have to fix. Is this this? Nope. It's coming apart. Sometimes it's tough to tell exactly which bones are moving. I really wish this program... Like I said, I like it because of the rendering capabilities that uses the graphics card instead of the, uh, yeah, why is that moving back? Oh, I know, the select all register, because on frame 70, I did not copy this pose, so that's why, because what, what, what's happening is, yeah, I have a pose on frame zero, but there's a pose on frame 70. If we go to frame 70, it goes back to the default because that's, yeah, where frame 75, there we go. So basically what I have to do here in order to keep the hands in the same position is box select the specific bones that I want to keep in the same pose because I want to keep her arms like this while she's running with the bike and paste it here. There we go. So now, yep, she should be running with it and the arms, up, they don't, yeah, they pretty much don't move. Well, they're not going to move. So next thing to fix is the Vespa, and this is going to be tricky because they're both going to be moving. Um, yeah, this has some motion data in it already because I am reusing this scene setup from another scene that I probably will cut out in lieu of this scene, so that is why that has motion data. Alright, so let's go to frame 70 and move this up. Now this um, Vespa, um, I found it on Bolro, which is the Japanese site um, that has some free model downloads and whatnot. But some of them are on DVD art. Some of them, it was just more expedient. I could have made this in SketchUp, but I didn't feel like it because why well, make the same exact thing that already exists? It would just be really kind of time consuming for no difference. If I wanted to make like a different style Vespa, but whereas, um, okay. Then yeah, I would um, have done it from scratch in and... move this over a little bit. I would have done it in scratch in SketchUp, but since this is good enough, I will use this one. All right. Actually, should. Rotate. Oh, oh, that's not the right thing. Where is the... Is this, this it? Yeah, that's it. That should be it. I think it's the right thing and not a dial. Yep, there we go. Alright. And yes, of course, this Vespa is yellow because it is a shout out to Freddy Cuddy. Although I don't 
don't think the original. No, the original was a different color. The original was. Let's go back to this. Now comes the hard part: fine tuning the pose to make sure the hands are actually on the handlebars. Which is just a lot of TM, a lot of small adjustments, just like with 2D, although I really am liking 3D a lot better. It's just easier to visualize everything. Although it does have kind of its, its downsides, um, which is mainly, I guess, time spent if you wanted to make a really custom model to do specific things um that is a little bit boring and tedious which i'll get into that in um daz 3d which daz 3d has um it has an anime character plugin set up whatever sliders um because the way that works is they have a base body that you can from that base body you can make pretty much any type of character male female strong skinny human non-human and they do have a anime plugin but um that anime plugin does take some tweaking to get it satisfactorily the correct type of anime i guess you'd say because some of it is not, does not really look that good. I'm having trouble. Might have to tweak some. This character, let's see, move this over slightly. And open the hands too. Uh... Oh, there is a file. Yeah, and that's the other thing too. The good thing about this is you can save all of these preset poses. So these are just a bunch of poses um, that I previously did and just saved as I did things. Like, for example, you know, a fist or something like that, or right now, like, I'm going to open this hand and try to wrap the thumb around there. And from there, you can just, in order to save, like, the pose, and once I finish posing this, it's really simple, and then you can load it in automatically every time. Although the difference is instead of selecting all register like I just did to save the whole body pose, like say I just want to copy this hand. Well, first of all, I want to copy it and copy the fingers and reverse it, which is going to do it over here. So basically what I just did was copy this hand pose and it, using reverse, copy and reverse, it um, changes it over to the opposite hand basically mirrors it. So let's just fix this part. So you make that shoulder go up. Which is another thing I've noticed in a lot of animations and just not just 3D but also 2D. Um, which is one reason why I really like 3D is um, since it has a existing bone structure, which you can you can do that with 2D now. They have um, I'm trying to think what I think it's Anime Studio, which doesn't really have anything to do with animators. But say is um, by a French company, I think Smith Micro, which also makes Manga Studio. But they have in their animation software, um, Anime Studio, where it has bones that you can assign to like a drawing. So say I drew a character 
you can actually draw bone structures and use that to animate with. And that keeps the same volume. I think they do it a lot in, um, I hate to say animations like My Little Pony and all those types of whatever, um, what would you call that? Cut out animation, yeah. Which, you know, it's good for some things. I think Family Guy does it a lot too now. Especially though Family Guy is mixing in a lot of 3D too. So, let's see, I have to move this over. Yeah, Family Guy is using a lot of 3D now. Which is, it's just so, t it's so time saving. But like I said, the downside is, I mean, you can do everything that you can do in 2D in 3D, but some things are just simpler to do. Like if you want to do smears or something in 3D, you can do it. And it would just be, because I've done it in, um, actually, if you look at my old videos, the first gunmetal black, um, what should we call it? Uh, I guess it was a concept vid that I did. Um, I did smears in that for punches and things. And all it is is a one of these um, morphs, which you do in the PMD editor, which I still need to make a video on that. There we go. Oh, almost. But that's all it is is um it's easy to do um but you are still bound by like the vertexes and if you want to do something very specific with a smear animation smear or multiples you can all do those things it's just um time consuming to move the vertices around and make sure you get everything in the right place i guess so right now, I think it's just a rotation. This uh, little box down here is the interpolation curve. So I'm pretty sure. And what I just did is I went to all because you have X, Y, and Z rotation, which are interpolation, which is just basically like between type of thing with this, whereas if you have, you know, pose A and pose B, um, this is your easing, and the curves are what you can move by clicking on the um, red pluses or X's or whatever. This is how you set your interpolation curve, your easing, you know, nice speed in and slow down or accelerate or, you know, so that would be speed up and then speed up again but i'm changing it to liner for the root bone of this vespa because i think or maybe not the trick is to match now this vespa up with the character which actually just by doing this right now where i'm moving it it automatically will detect, hey, you put this here, which means, you know, from point A, whatever, 0 to 30, frame 0 to 30, that in order to get from to this point, from frame 0, the curve has to look like this, which is really cool because it basically is like auto, <laughs> auto interpolation, I guess you would say. So now we have to do some stuff like this, which is going to be tricky. She's running up and down. Guess what I could do. What can I do? Push the bike down? Why not? Depends on how I shoot it. Which really, I'm probably gonna... Yeah. And right, let's see how this is.
Alright. So go up and down. Well, I guess the curve doesn't really have to be smooth since it is not. It's not like she's riding the bike right yet. She's just getting it to start. So, let's see. Damn. Alright, so. The other thing, let's set up the camera, rudimentary camera. And I think I said this before in another tutorial, but I want to follow the main character, so in order to do that, you can do it basically with any model that's here. If you select it, it automatically does a rebound. So this is, if you've seen the other videos, this is just a repeat. And from here, I can do this. It's be like something like this. I'm trying to get the same sort of angle that they had in Girl Who Left Through Time. And doing it this way, make sure that the um, camera stays steady following the character down. I have to do a lot of down and up just to get this to match up. to go back in here and tweak all the individual in-betweens just like a 2, 2D start with your big poses and then go back and fix the in-betweens now Poser has a lot of this too like I said the only problem with I have with Poser is my computer is not strong enough to handle it really to do it justice, especially with physics and things. I also would have to to copy these, but it's mostly the um, and by copy these I mean export like all the scenery, everything would have to be re-exported for Poser, which I can do. It's just you know time consuming. But that is part of the reason for the Patreon page is all of your donations, if you are donating, are going to getting a decent rig. Because right now my computer is not, um, it really can't handle much more than this. And in order to do, like, decent renders, because eventually I want to learn to do, like, Final Fantasy style renders. Which I can design those characters in like Dad Studio, but to render like that would just take forever. And uh, it's also very hard to animate in that because uh, in like, well, in MMD, in order to animate like this, let's say I was doing this in Poser, I'd probably have to do it in Wireframe, which is not, it's not bad, it's, you know, it's Wireframe. But it's just, uh, just, I don't know if it runs a lot better or what. I, I just don't know why that, uh, they can seem to have a program like MMD that is free, that has been around for a while, and do 3D animation in it simply. And meanwhile, all these really expensive programs, for some reason, are just pain in the ass and don't have like a lot of the functionality that this has or they do have functionality it's just that you know there's no reason why you should need a super expensive rig set up in order just to run the program and animate with it especially when you can do this 
These aren't high poly models, these would be the same ones I'm using, I'd use in uh, Poser, but I've tried it before and it just runs like crap basically. I, there would be no way that I could even try to record a video using Poser or iClone. And iClone is pretty good, but it still has that, I don't know what the issue is, just the way that it loads the models, or I don't know. The other thing, too, is I like, um, lately I've been liking to make, like, big battle scenes where the character is fighting hordes of people or whatever. So, that would be pretty much impossible. The most I ever, using this computer, uh, the most I ever managed to do was have, I think, three characters. Yeah, three characters on scene, and it was just like a simple gunfight. It wasn't even melee stuff, and it was just ran like crap, even in wireframe. It's just really disappointing trying to do that. So, unfortunately, that's why I stick with LMD for now. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But, once it gets to frame 70, then I can do um, jumping on the bike, which should be a little bit easier because one of the things that they added in all the new versions of MMD is, um, I don't know how you'd say it, I guess binding to the character or whatnot, uh, where you can, like these are PMD models or PMX models, you can actually take two PMD or PMX models and weld them together which makes it really easy now to do things like if I want to have this character just sit on the bike and move the bike and moving the bike will actually move the character because they're welded together. That's before version 9. We weren't able to do that. This isn't the latest version. This is version 9.21. I don't like to update MMD to the latest stuff because a lot of the latest um, releases really have a lot of problems sometimes with backwards compatibility of either files or Miku Miku Effect. No matter, like, I, th I think this has like um, 0.73 for Miku Miku Effect, and it works pretty well. And most of the shaders and other things made by um, like, a lot of special effects are made by Beamman, if you... I'll probably put a link in there if you like explosions or magic or things like that. Um, which, I don't really make those, although I could. It's just time-consuming, and I don't really know how to program the FX files in order to do that. So, I use Beamman, Beamman's stuff, which is, uh, his stuff is really awesome. Sometimes you have to figure out how exactly to use it. Um, but, and some of it, um, are things, you know, like technically you don't even have to use, uh, 3D effects like he has. You could just do an After Effects like, you know, explosions or bullet time or, um, what else? There we go. Sort of, almost. A lot of boingy boingy, up and down. Not bad. So, okay, frame 70. This is where it gets tough. First of all, let's save. Because now, I have to... Let's see where she is, stride-wise. Down. Okay, I'm going to make that a keyframe. And then this should. Oh, no, no, no. This should be where she jumps on. So I have to tweak some of this. 
and then delete the rest. And the trick with this is actually making it look like it's seamless because I'm not going to do a seam cut, which is the cheap way to just cut to jumping on, unless I'm really bad and, uh, at doing this scene, which, hey, you know, not the best 3D animator, really. I'm still learning like everybody else, but, yeah, move this back a bit. Actually, okay, no, yeah, click on the wrong button. Not button, phone. So, something like that. But sometimes you do need to cut if your animation is just that bad. Just automatically cut to a different scene. Okay, that should be better. Alright, and from here... Let's say 80, she's going to be sitting down, so I'm going to make that a keyframe, and I'm going to delete all of the rest, hit all frame, range select, delete. Alright. Wow, oh, that looks re really weird. Oh, it's because, uh, jump. I see. All right. So actually, I can delete this too. There we go. So seventy. Move the bike up. Seventy-five. I still have to fix that. Hands again. Where is it? Paste. Actually, what am I doing? I could technically just do seventy one and we're going to delete all these bones like we did before because it'll be easier to make a smoother transition. Yeah. Range select. Delete them. Since everything does not move at the same time, which I find that's the fundamental thing you really have to pay attention to, which was one of the reasons why I like 3D, because it's a little bit easier just for me to see, you know, where the bones are, how the bones move, and, um, now even, even if I do something in 2D, I still use a lot of, I'll use, like, a 3D character, basically, to plot out the, the should. Yeah, let's see. Uh, I have to fix this. I'll still use a 3D character to actually plot out the motion just because it's really easy to see how to move things. And by that, I mean just human movement. Like, a lot of people forget, you know, when you move your arm up, um, you know, your clavicle is moving up. Your whole shoulder is moving up. Let's register that. So, like, I know it's like if this was 2D, one of the things I used to do, which was the reason I sucked at 2D, was, yeah, I'd move the forearm up, but I wouldn't move the shoulder up right here, which is really how you move your arm. And it creates better movement now. More power to the people that, of course, can do that and remember that. I find animating is um, a lot of little things and remembering everything at once, kind of. Which I guess, you know, the more you do it, you just kind of realize that, hey, this goes this way, no matter what you're animating. 
any type of character. It doesn't have to be human or a dog or monster or animal or whatever. That things just move in a certain way. The other thing, which I have to get used to in 3D yet, is a lot of mass and momentum, which is... You know, it's hard no matter what you're doing, unless you're a really good animator, which you've worked out all those issues. But mass and momentum is, um, it's a real challenge. I mean, you can get away with it, you know, with physics and stuff like that, but I think it's really better if you can do it by yourself. Although there are some things that I wish MMD had ragdoll physics just for some things. Because, um, there's just some things that you, I wouldn't say can't animate, but realistically, you can't animate it, but it will always look animated, which is fine if you want to go for that. But, um, sometimes you don't want to go for that. Sometimes you want something that is kind of realistic. So, let's see. This is going to be moving forward. Uh, yeah, move this forward, something like that maybe. So the trick here is right at this frame, next frame, I have to use this outside parenting, that's what they call it, which is just basically welding the character to another model. Which is just like using an accessory, just a, little, just a little bit different. So uh, first of all, I have to find out what this crotch bone... All right, actually, maybe I should use this bone. What is that? Is that the center? No, it's a groove bone. I guess I'll use the groove bone. Want to use the groove. Vespa and seat. There. It's not exactly where I want it, but let's move this back onto the right place. I'm probably going to have to do a tween in between this frame because it's a lot of motion. I don't want it to make it look robotic or jumpy. Uh, on, foot rotate, there we go, so, wow, well, see if we can do this, this is, I guess, a frame in between there, yeah, maybe more, jump, maybe another one, There we go. The mic's going to still go forward. And I'm probably going to do like a wobble, you know, and then she'll finally get straightened out. And we're going to fix this real quick. And fix the hands on the bike to balance. I also want to fix the head later too because she's kind of looking down. And then doubt, copy, and reverse. Easiest way. Make sure you're at least somewhat set in the correct area if you're trying to do symmetrical movement or near symmetrical, symmetrical movement. Come on. One of these days I'll have to live stream this. The last time I tried that, my live stream kept crashing. I don't know why. Move this character forward a bit. Get on that bike. Whoops. 
not that way. Wrong bone. This bone. Yep. Come on. The downside too about 3D is if you do 3D, I recommend you keep drawing. Just keep drawing because just like everything else, your skills in one thing can atrophy. Although, I don't know. Um, I think my drawing skill, just from messing with 3D, messing with the bones, and messing with the proportions constantly. I've kind of found that um, I think my proportions are a little bit better just because I'm used to dealing with flushed out models that are have the right proportions. So it's just something to think about, but yeah. And I still don't know how Monium did it. I wanted to ask him. I should have asked them, but I didn't. And now I never will be able to. All right. So there we go. She's on the bike. Let's go back. And this bike is not going forward. So let's see where it is exactly. Move it a little bit forward. Actually. like that. And then from there, I don't know, let's just go to like this 195, whatever. And we're just gonna, whoop, why is this, huh, I don't know why that's dragging like that. Maybe because it's the groove bone? I, yeah, I think it's because it's the groove bone and not the Whatever center line, I don't know what bone that is. So basically, I'm going to have to, once again, outside parent. And I want to use that. I want to use whatever this is. No, not that. Whatever this is. This is probably going to screw up everything. Null 01. Let's try null one Vespa seat. It's gonna screw up my whole movement. Or maybe not. Let's see. Let's go to why is my camera moving? Oh, because oh yeah, alright, whatever. Um, say 195. And the Vespa. Nope, it's still doing that. I don't know why. It's weird. Uh, looks like you're hanging off for dear life. I wonder why it's not. Uh, oh. Might be because it's not the center bone. All right, whatever. But yeah, stuff like this, this weird stuff. Oh, really? That's why, because it's, I'm using the center bone, not the um, ever origin Bone of all bones. <laughs> Mother bone, that's what it is. Jeez. Bone of all bones. It is the bone of all bones. So this is what's going to mess up my thing. What is this? This is null no, oh, oh. So let's try it. Null no, oh, oh. That's, uh, this, should, this should really screw up everything. Yeah. Yep. 
I am. This is why I was talking about doing cuts because, oh, I don't want to. I have to remove all those, these parts. Actually, first I should deselect this. Well, the other way to do it is just do it like I did it and move the feet along with the, let's go to 195. There's 195. I wish you could just select the whole thing and move it there with you. Well, with the character. So, come on. Alright. Because if I reset it, it resets to frame zero or uh, origin point, which is way the hell back there. Oh, all this stuff is in the way. This is where it gets tricky <laughs> to figure out how to do it. Because there's a couple ways you can do it. I could adjust um, found different bones. Where is it? Which is one of the things that if you make an animation, which I'll have to do the next time, is um, show you how, like, say you want to do something or, I don't know, Something simple like you register copy register. Will it do that? Yeah. All right. Nice. But uh, say you found like a cool animation, like for example, um, I know, um, Monium in his Dead or Alive series, or not Dead or Alive, Final Fantasy, um, Dead Fantasy. Um, but there were some movements in there during the fight scenes which were just straight rips of the character movements um, from Dead or Alive, which is fine because that's, you know, <laughs> what, you, what you're supposed to do, you know, with that. Let's see if this is actually following along, though. I'm going to have to change the bone on which the camera is bound to because... Nope, that is still didn't give me... The other one was working, though. I don't know why this is... Select all register, maybe that's why. No, but um, say you want to do like motion tracing, 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 um, for a movement that you like, or like a special move or something that uh, is in, I don't know, Street Fighter or something. Um, if you do that, you want to animate not moving the root bone. So the root bone is always going to be in the zero zero position, which it's hard to tell here because I don't have the axis on and I'm way off the axis because this is a moving uh, animation. Which, like I said, I'll, I'll get more into this next time. Um, let's see. Foot is hanging off and I want it to drag. Put it in. This would be harder if it was a motorcycle. So you have the foot pegs. Oh, this building is in the way. Oh, yeah, there we go. But um, you always want to keep the zero zero, well, that the um, mother bone at zero zero, and move the rest of the character around. And then, like, when you do that, you know, I can show you this real quick. Let me load in another character. Um, nope, no, I don't want to do it. Let me slow this in. If I can find something. There we go. There we go. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh! <laughs> why? This is why. This is why. Occasionally this happens, very rarely. I will say, MMD very rarely crashes, except if you do what I did and you're being stupid. But I guess, you know, I'm going to end this video here, which it is pretty long anyways. But, um, and thanks for watching. I will get into what I was talking about, um, next time. 
God damn it. At least I saved somewhere along the line. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.